Welcome back, folks. Uh, for now, the market is still holding flat, but the bank nifty is still under a bit of pressure. So there are stocks that surge and there are stocks that create wealth. Cosmo Films is one of them. In fact, a year back, I think Cosmo Films was at 450 rupees. Today, the stock is at 1400. So it's been a triple bagger in just one year. It's been a good set of earnings as well for the company. So Q1 uh, profits have jumped 85% year on year. And it's a strong EBITDA that the company has posted on the back of its uh, speciality sales business. Basically, the packaging films business has done very well uh, post-COVID. Pankaj Podar, who is the CEO of Cosmo Films, joins us now to talk about that. Uh, Mr. Podar, uh, good afternoon and thanks for joining us. You know, I want to understand a little bit about this demand that you got from packaging films because uh, expectedly during the COVID phase anything and everything was being packaged so there was this boost in demand but now that things have sort of normalized have you seen demand peter off and what could a realistically gr realistic growth rate be for you? Yeah, hi. Good afternoon to all the viewers. Uh, so see, Cosmo is not just into packaging films. We are also into industrial films into uh, lamination, label films. So there's a very strong portfolio of films that we have, including synthetic paper. Uh, so yes, the demand for packaging is growing, but for us, the results are not just driven by packaging, but also growth in synthetic paper, lamination, labels, uh, and so on. So basically, we are uh, our, our speciality growth journey is going exceedingly well for us. Uh, in the quarter one, uh, based on the corresponding uh, quarter of last year, we grew by 20%. And uh, that's leading to uh, this uh, improvement in the financial numbers. Okay, Mr. Podar. Uh, so then, you know, tell us this. I was looking at the margin profile as well. I mean, uh, I was looking at full year numbers. FI 21, your top line grew, uh, you know, a, a modest 4%. Uh, but there was a, a huge amount of margin expansion. From 12%, you went to 17 This quarter, the, you know, EBITDA margin is almost 20%. So are these sustainable levels? How is the, the raw material profile moving and what should we expect here? Yeah, so it is largely driven by uh, three factors, I would say. Uh, the first factor uh, very clearly is the growth in the speciality. Uh, we are continuously moving uh, quarter on quarter and improving our speciality growth. Even versus quarter four of last year, there's a good growth in uh, quarter one. Uh, so that's first point for us. The second thing is, uh, the demand overall for the film industry is uh, very positive uh, and therefore the margins in the domestic and export margins uh, are running at a very healthy level and uh, you know they are expected to stay at healthy level because uh, there are not many lines coming worldwide uh, but it's obviously very difficult to predict, uh, predict in terms of how the margins for the overall film uh, will stay and the third is that we're taking a lot of initiatives on improving the sustainability and some of these initiatives are also helping us reduce cost because we are able to uh, reduce our conversion ratios, the wastages, reprocess some of it, reduce the packaging cost here and there. So a lot of these sustainability initiatives are also helping us to reduce the cost. So I would say these are the three main reasons for our uh, uh, profitability to go up. You just okay. mentioned speciality films, a quick follow up, and that's a growing segment for you. It's the high margin. How much of your sales is speciality right now? And how much uh, would you hope to grow it by, say, end of the year? So in value terms, it has already exceeded uh, 80%. Uh, and if I talk about last year in volume terms, it was uh, 52%. And as I already said, that Q1 to Q1, we grew by 20%. So uh, both in volume terms is growing and value terms, again, it's growing very well for us. Okay. Your numbers for FI21 now come on a high base. You have a lot to achieve in FI22. Your profit was up 100 odd percent. Uh, what can you achieve in, say, an absolute number or maybe a percentage figure on your profit this time? So because of the SEBI guidelines, we cannot make forward-looking statements. Uh, but all I can say is that we are progressing very well on our speciality margins. Uh, the other packaging segment is uh, running very healthy. Overall basis, we continue our journey on the cost reduction. Uh, so overall, uh, <clears throat> we are uh, seeing a stronger uh, performance uh, uh, internally. Okay. I just had a quick follow-up with regards to two segments that you have. Uh, synthetic paper, which is basically, you know, an alternate to durable paper, which is available. And uh, also your pet care segment, which you were expected to launch in Q2. Uh, an update on these two. Yeah, so synthetic paper, in spite of the fact that there was a lockdown in the country and the world at large, 
this segment also goes into restaurants and a uh, lot of other areas, university certificates. In spite of that, we had a good growth in the synthetic paper because we are opening up a lot of new segments. In fact, even in the retail where it goes into tags and labels, uh, retail was closed uh, largely in the quarter one. But in spite of these factors, a lot of new applications we are able to develop on this. Uh, we continue to launch newer product lines uh, within the synthetic paper range, and therefore it's growing very well for us. Uh, we have also recently came out with a synthetic paper which can print on all types of laser printers. And uh, you know we can obviously look at uh, putting this paper into uh, re, uh, you know into the consumer uh, segment and the office segment as well. Um, but overall, segment is growing well. Uh, talking about our pet care initiative, we have mm -hmm. named it as Zigli. Mm -hmm. uh, the first store as well as the website will be up and running in the quarter two, uh, and the app uh, will be running in the quarter three. As a part of this Zigli business, uh, the pet care business, we are going to launch multiple services for the customers as well as a whole range of SKUs and some lot of new variety that uh, consumers in India have not yet seen. Uh, so all that would be available both online and offline. Okay. There is a new product as well, right? Uh, the afterwash laundry sanitizer that you've launched, Fabritizer. I want to understand a little bit about that market itself because in this post-COVID world, uh, that's something I assume gets a lot of demand. Uh, what kind of investments are you putting in here? Is this going to be a big part of your business? And, uh, you know, what does the future potential look like? Yes, so we started textile chemical division. I mean, we decided to start it two years back. We started working on it. We did a lot of research. And uh, I'm very happy to share that by now we have 20 plus products uh, launched under textile chemical category. Uh, there are more than 10 products which got box approval. So when COVID happened, uh, you know, a year and a half back, we said that uh, we need to give some something back to the society. We actually worked on multiple things. We worked on a mask. We worked on a gown. Uh, we worked on this uh, textile chemical. So whatever we had knowledge of, we deployed our research and development, and eventually we said that uh, this product makes a lot of sense. Initially, you know, it was a B2B product. So we have a, a textile chemical which can give a 50 wash uh, proof against, uh, you know, uh, all types of viruses, uh, uh, you know, the bacteria and so on and so forth. So initially, it was a B2B product for the industrial application, which obviously we are talking to various garment processors and the brands. Uh, but we said that why should we not launch it as a consumer product as well? Uh, maybe every household, uh, you know, it will do very well for us. And we give a very nice claim that even after washing for seven days, uh, it will continue to fight against uh, viruses and germs. Actually, up to seven days, it gives a 99.9% .9 protection and it continues to give uh, protection even beyond seven days, it's just that, uh, you know, the protection slowly uh, goes down uh, and it stays for a very long period uh, on the clothes. So it's a very nice, uh, and, and, you know, we are all uh, used to disinfectants uh, from our child uh, childhood and, uh, you know, viruses are here to stay. We are seeing that over last 15, 20, 30 years, different okay. uh, versions of viruses are coming and affecting the humankind. Okay. And therefore we felt that, you know, this is something which can uh, be a good disinfectant for the consumers. It's a new claim. We obviously have uh, also applied a patent on this product. The product is tested in the US lab and in Indian lab. Sure. And uh, we launched it two months back. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Podar, we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and speaking with us. So that's Cosmo Films. Stock is up 5.7%. Need to take a short break, but we'll get chatting with the management of Greenply on the other side. Stay tuned.